let's go over how to blend alcohol markers. So I've got all these different brands. We've got the Copic Chows, the Yahoohoo's, Caliart, and Sharpie. And hopefully by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a better understanding about how to do blends with your own alcohol markers. So I'm gonna open up to this page that I've already prepped for showing you how I blend my alcohol markers. But before we get started, I'm going to go over paper really quick. It's so essential that you have the correct sort of paper. This right here is my Hoo Hoo sketchbook. Do you need an a Hoo Hoo sketchbook? No. But what you're looking for is a type of paper or sketchbook that is compatible with alcohol markers and with blending them. Because even paper that's compatible with alcohol markers sometimes still has issues when it comes to really good blends. First, I'm gonna start out with the Copic Chow brush markers. I'm gonna begin with my lightest color really quick and I'm just gonna color this circle in. I personally like to lay down a base color first, which is always my lightest color. And then I go ahead and take my slightly darker color and I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it down just on the edge here, kind of going up. And I'm gonna stop right here so that I can go back to my other color and start blending the edge out just like this and just keep kind of going over it, going back and forth until you get the desired sort of blend that you are looking for. And then when you finish with that, get your even darker color and color the edge again. And with this color, you can see like it's already sort of blending itself. That's because the ink is still kind of wet. So it just seeps right into it and I can go through and blend it out further. And I could probably take another color that's even darker and repeat the process to get even a darker shading right here. But I just wanna get the general idea for right now. So that's the Copic. Let's try out my hoo-hoos. Gonna start with yellow and I'm coloring in the circle. And the reason I'm doing all these brands is because some people believe that some brands are better at blending than others. And to an extent that is kind of true, for instance, I find Sharpie really hard to blend, but it's all about sort of understanding how to blend. That helps the most. So I laid down that orange and now I'm going back to my yellow and I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth out the edges. And all I'm doing is laying the ink right on top of the edges. And you'll even see that layering a lot creates a darker color of the same marker. Then we're gonna take this red and use it right here and it's a really deep red. And then go back to your orange, kind of soften it up a bit. And then back to the yellow to get it even softer on the edges of the orange so that you have a good transition happening. And there we go, so that's the Ahuhu. And then I'm gonna do the Cali Art. These are also brush markers, but I'm gonna do the chisel nib because there's this belief that you can't blend chisel nibs or that it's extremely hard in comparison. And I don't think that's true. I think the chisel nibs are just misunderstood. So I'm literally just doing the same thing, filling this in. And then I'm gonna go to my darker color and do the same thing. Just coloring right on the edge here like so. And then I'm gonna go in with my previous color and blend out the edges. And then again, I'm gonna do the same thing this time with my even darker color. This is like a bluish color. And I'm just coloring over that same area and going back with my green and softening up around it. There we go, simple enough. And now Sharpie. These are actually my hardest markers to blend with, but it's not impossible. They're also chisel nibs. But I go ahead and I lay down this blue color that's going to be kind of my base. And then this darker blue, which is very, very dark. So the blend might not be as good, but I guess we will find out. And I'm really just using the same technique on all of these just going over the edge until I achieve the desired blend that I'm looking for. Oh, that's not too bad. And then I've got an even darker blue. It's kind of like navy, good 
Madre. I couldn't open it for a second. And this is like so dark, it's almost black, but that's okay. I'm only gonna use a little bit because I don't wanna overdo it. So I went back to my other color and I'm just going right on the edge. And that's it. And then I might just connect it all the way with this circle. Now it did bleed a little bit outside of my circle. That's kind of common for Sharpies. And then I have these here. I'm gonna show how the transition happens from one color to the next. When I'm doing transitions like these, I like to start with my darkest color first. So I'm gonna do the Copic brush and start flicking over. And you always wanna move kind of quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch on over to my other color and bring it on out. And then when I get to a certain place where I feel like, okay, it's time to transition, I stop and I'll take my lightest color and finish it off. And I start right over top of the last color and drag out until I reach the end. And that's basically it. And I have a nice, beautiful blend going from this dark purple to a medium purple to a kind of blush pink. And then let's try the same thing with these Ahuhus. Again, I'm starting out with the darkest one over here, flicking to the side and then stopping in order to transition to my orange, which will go right over top and I'll pull out. And in order to get that red to really blend into the orange, I may even press a little harder to really get the pigment to mesh into there and pull the red and force the red to basically like melt into the orange. And then I kind of go out and over and then I take my yellow and do the same thing until the orange just blends right into it. And that's that. So that was the Hoo Hoo brush. And now we're going to try out the Cali Art chisel. And starting with this kind of, it's like a blue, but maybe like a turquoise or a teal. I don't know, but it's really pretty. And so I'm just dragging it to the side, trying to flick it. It's kind of harder to flick with the chisel nib, but then going into my green and pulling out. And this is gonna be a really pretty transition. I really like these colors going together from that kind of like sea blue to green. And then a really light green at the end. And that is that. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the Sharpie, starting with our darkest color, like the others, and then going out over to the side, doing that same sort of flicking motion, and then getting my second color, which is this deep blue, going on top and dragging it out again, just like that. And then getting the last blue, which is my lightest blue, and doing that same thing. And I'm just gonna work this area a little bit more just to make sure it blends out well. And there we go. So all blends are really, really good in my opinion. And as I demonstrated before, all the ways that I use them were exactly the same despite being all these different brands. So now I'm going to get into these three quick techniques. I'm gonna do the feathering techniques with my Copics. And that's basically where you just take your marker and you feather out or feather down or feather in whichever direction you want. In this case, I'm going down and it's just dragging the nib and flicking down. It sometimes is referred to flicking as well, not just feathering. And then again, transitioning to this other purple and doing the same motion. This is often used for hair because the strokes kind of look like hair cascading down in a way. And then finally, my last color, and sometimes you can even move in the opposite direction. You can go up and meet into the blend with your marker and then just go over it again, just to make sure the colors blend well. And there we go. And then the tip to tip, I'm gonna use Sharpie for this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just take off the caps to each marker and you just take one marker facing up, your other marker facing down, and you just touch the tips. And you kind of want to let gravity do its thing. 
as the ink from the upper marker will flow down into the nib of the lower marker. And when you paint, out comes the upper marker and you just keep painting until it fades into the other marker. And you can kind of see the transitioning happening right about here as my nib is returning back to the original color. And that's it. And it's just a really smooth, seamless blend. I really love this method. And then finally, I'm gonna use the Cali Art for the overlay. This is also another one that's really self-explanatory, but it's basically just filling in with your base color and then going over with a secondary color, just like that, and softening the edges by going over top again with your base color until it blends right in, and that's it. And it becomes pretty subtle. Sometimes you might wanna go over the darker color just one more time, just to make it really be visible. And there you go. So these are the techniques that I use to blend with my alcohol markers. And I hope you found it helpful seeing all these different brands and how you can still achieve a blending effect no matter what sort of marker you're using, whether it's a Copic brush or a Huhu or Cali Art or Sharpie, you can still get blending results in the end. So make sure you thumbs up this video, leave a comment, and I will see you all next time. Thanks, bye.